All right, kiddos, we're going to do a few more electron configurations, and after that you should be pretty good to go on your own without any more help from me. If you remember, we ended with potassium not too long ago, and they gave you some homework help. We're moving on to calcium now. Now calcium, take a look. It's atomic number 20. Notice it's the 1, 2, 3, the 4th uh, row down on the periodic table, and this is what we call S block, and it's the second element over. So we might be tempted to say that its configuration would end with 4 S 2. And that would be a good temptation. That would be correct. It will end with 4 S 2. Now remember a little shortcut. We're going to start with the noble gas preceding calcium in this case, which is argon. We'll put that in brackets. And then we're going to take a look at our little hotel diagram. And as you recall, calcium has 20 electrons. We have 19 in here so far. The 20th is going to go into the 4s and pair up with that 19th that was in there earlier. So sure enough, as we suspected, it ends with 4s2. The dot picture, pretty straightforward. Remember the s sublevel, there's only one orbital and it has two electrons in it. You guys can see that they're paired and so that's the dot picture for calcium. I want you to pause this now and go back in your notes and look at magnesium and beryllium's dot picture, and you will notice that they're the same. Once again, elements in the same family will have the same ending electron configuration, and as a result, they will have the same dot pictures. Okay, now the next element is atomic number 21, and that is scandium. So scandium has 21 electrons. Let's take a look at its position on the periodic table. Here's calcium with 20, and right next to it is scandium with 21. Now notice when we did, when we jumped from beryllium to boron, and from magnesium to aluminium, sort of a gap in the periodic table. This time that gap is missing. It's replaced with 10 elements here. Now 10 is a significant number on the periodic table. Let's take a look. After the 4s, remember about that? 3D, it's on the third energy level. Remember it was closer, but it was harder to get to. So the 4S was farther away, but it's an easier orbital for the electrons to make. So after that's filled up with um, potassium and calcium, then the 3D starts to fill up. And scandium, uh, its last electron will take one of those 3D orbitals. We really don't know which one, whether it's the X squared minus Y squared. We don't know if it's the XY. Um, the XZ, the YZ, etc. We just know it's going to take one of those five. They all have equal energy uh, for right now. So we're going to put it right there. So its configuration ends with 4S2, 3D1. So the noble gas before it is still argon, but we go 4S2, 3D1. Now what's its dot picture going to look like? If you say it will have one dot in it, you haven't been listening. If you say it will have three dots in it, you haven't been listening. Remember the dot picture only contains the valence electrons, and the valence electrons are the ones in the highest energy level. Now remember, the fourth energy level is farther away than the third. Remember the 4s was just filled first because it was easier to fill than the 3d, but it is farther away. So the highest energy level for scandium is the fourth. The S sublevel has a pair of electrons in it, so scandium's dot picture would have two dots. Interesting, isn't it? We don't even worry about that one there because it's in the third energy level, which is closer to the nucleus than the fourth. Okay, after scandium comes titanium. So let's see what's going to happen with titanium. Titanium has 22 electrons. We know where the first 21 are going to go. The 22nd is probably going to go right here in another one of those d orbitals. So it will end with 4s2, 3d2. So once again, the noble gas before titanium is argon. It ends with 4s2, 3d2. What's its dot picture going to look like? Once again, the fourth energy level is the farthest one away. It has a pair of electrons in it. So titanium will have a pair or two dots from those four S. After titanium is vanadium, 
So we're going to put an electron in here. There's another D electron. And is that vanadium? There's the one, two, third D element here. So we have one, two, three D electrons. And notice they're all unpaired. We call that paramagnetic, by the way, when we see unpaired electrons. So vanadium is argon, 4s2, 3d3. It's dot picture. Please don't say three dots. Don't say five. Come on. What is it? There you go. You finally remembered. The fourth energy level is the highest. It has a pair of electrons there. So vanadium's dot picture looks just like titanium's and scandium's, doesn't it? In fact, what do you think chromium's dot picture will look like? And what do you think the dot picture for manganese will look like? And you would probably be correct saying that they would each have a pair. Okay? Now there are some exceptions to these rules that we're talking about, and we're not going to get into those for right now. Um, in advanced placement chemistry we will, and those exceptions are within this D block that we're discussing. Don't worry about them for right now. Let's skip ahead, if we could, to gallium. Let's do gallium. Gallium on the periodic table is atomic number 31. It has 31 electrons. Now, the noble gas before gallium is still argon. So we're going to put that in brackets. And then let's go ahead and figure out what its configuration will be. Um, and when we get to gallium, we'll have filled up all of these 10 D block elements. So I'm going to go ahead and put these arrows in here. We're going to pair them all up in my 3D. And so that takes us to zinc. And then after zinc comes gallium. So that 31st electron looks like it's going to go into the 4P. So it looks like gallium is going to end with 4S2, 3D10, 4P1. So 4S2, 3D10, 4P1. How many dots will be in gallium's dot picture? Please don't say 1. Please don't say 11. Please don't say 13. How many? If you said 3, you are correct. The fourth energy level is the highest for gallium. It has a pair in the S, and the P sublevel, remember it has three orbitals, has one. So the dot picture will have a pair and one by itself. Okay? Well, that should help you out. That gives you a great running start. You guys should be able to figure out the electron configuration for just about any element. Let's take a look at this periodic table. If you haven't figured this out already, you know that this here we call the S block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this would be 7s1, 7s2, 6s1, 6s2, 5s1, 5s2, etc. on the way up. Over here we have the P block, except for helium. And this is 2P1, 3P1, 4P1, 5P1. Uh, fluorine would be 2P5. Chlorine would be would end with 3P5. Bromine would end with 4P5, etc. In the middle we have the D block. And the D block, these always lag one, be one behind the row number. So remember, scandium ended with not 4D1, but 3D1. Titanium ended with 3D2. Even though zirconium is in the fifth row, it ends with 4D2. Niobium would end with 4D3. Molybdenum would end with 4D4, etc. Now, when I get down to here, to Latet uh, right before Lutetium and Lorentzium, you'll see little stars, and they refer to the lanthanide series and the actinide series. Something interesting happens on my energy sheet. Notice, after uh, the 6S is filled, the next highest energy is 4F, then 5D, then 6P. So it gets a bit complicated. After 6S comes the 4F, energy-wise. So the 4F is pretty close to the nucleus relative to the 6S. Here's my 6S. But the F orbitals are really hard to make. It takes a ton of energy for those electrons to maintain that shape. So they don't start filling in until after the 6s. So the 6s is filled in, and then we have 
uh, lanthanum, which ends with 4F1, cerium 4F2, um, promethium 4F3, neodymium 4F4, etc., up to 4F14. Then we can begin the 5Ds and then the 6Ps. Francium begins 7S. After 7S, we go to the 5Fs. Then we can go to the 6Ds and finally the 7Ps. Element 113, if you've been keeping an eye on the internet and newspapers, element 113 has recently been synthesized, so there actually is an element drawn in there in more recent periodic tables. Okay? Alrighty. Boy, we've done a lot of configurations here. Let's put this stuff away for right now. I'll get a little bit organized here. Um, we're not going to do this. Maybe I'll do this for you in class. You can read through this. We can talk uh, about the quantum numbers of the last electrons in an atom. Um, if we have time for that, we can do that. Um, do you all know what Hund's rule is? Hund's rule. We've been doing it, we just haven't stated it. So what do electrons do when they enter an orbital? Don't they go in one at a time before they begin to pair up? For instance, let's say I end with 2p5. So we have the 2p. Do we start going 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5? Or do the electrons go in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Well, for the 2p, it does, uh, 2p5 doesn't make a difference, but what if it was 2p4? Would it make a difference if it were 2p4? How do the electrons go in? Do they start pairing up right away? Would it look like that? Or do the electrons go in one at a time, and then when the sublevel's half full, then they begin to pair up? This is the correct way. So Hund's rule simply states that electrons go in one at a time until the sublevel's half full, and then they pair up. Okay? We've already done electron dot diagrams. We've done a bunch of those, and there are just some instructions and some examples on the bottom of this page for you to practice. But we've done a lot. Just go back and review the videos. Alrighty, that finally wraps up electron configurations and behavior of electrons. We are now going to apply all that we've learned to something called the periodic table. And we'll start our next discussion talking about this chap, Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev, and his organization of these elements into what we now call the periodic table. So we're going to stop there for now. Once again, if you need help with this, review the videos. You can do it over and over and over again. Use your textbook. It gives lots of examples. Come see me. We can work on some examples together. Okay? Other than that, good luck. Maybe I'll do another homework video for you to help you out with the assignment. I think we're on 15 or something like that. All right. Best of luck to you. Way to stick with it, kiddos. Um, boy, we're just about wrapped up with four, first quarter. We're one-fourth of the way there. You know, another, uh, what do we have... Uh, Boy, one quarter of the year is done. Eh, we still got a good chunk to go. But stick with me. We can do it, folks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.